Hello, and welcome to Chapter 5 of the Prentice Hall Biology Textbook. Today we will be studying populations. Section 5-1, How Populations Grow. So there are three main characteristics of populations. There's geographical distribution, also known as range, and this is the area inhabited by a population, and it can vary greatly in size. Next is density. Density is, uh, the population density is the number of individuals per unit area, and this depends on the species and the ecosystem. With a smaller ecosystem, you will have greater density and with, uh, than a greater ecosystem, uh, larger ecosystem. And with larger animals, you will have smaller population density than with smaller animals. Next is growth rate, also known as population growth. So with population growth, there are three main factors. Number of births, number of deaths, and number of individuals entering and leaving. When the number of births is greater than the number of deaths, the population grows. When the number of deaths is greater than the number of births, the population sinks. And then also the individuals entering and leaving is also known as immigration, which is the movement of individuals into a population, and emigration, the movement of individuals out of a population. So here we can see uh, this, the exponential growth of a population when there are no limiting factors. And you can see it'll just go up and up with the uh, population growth rate increasing. Here's what more, uh, what most ecosystems populations look like. There's a period of exponential growth before it hits the carrying capacity and begins to level out or almost stop. Now, the population will, growth will never stop. It'll always be rising or decreasing, but the average will be at its carrying capacity. So, the exponential growth occurs when individuals reproduce at a constant rate. So there's always new individuals being born, which will then be reproducing more individuals. And um, this needs ideal conditions to happen. And it, we never see fully exponential growth in nature. We see logistic growth. So this is when the gr growth slows down and we get the S-curve. Uh, the resources become less available, so growth slows or stops. And it, uh, this is through competition. And then the carrying capacity is the largest number of individuals an ecosystem can support. So that is when the S-curve reaches its limit. That is the carrying capacity of the ecosystem. All right. 5-2, limits to growth. So these limits to growth are what cause the S-curve. These are the reason for the carrying capacity. So limiting factors are factors that cause population growth to decrease. And there are two main kinds, the density-dependent factors and the density-independent factors. So uh, density-dependent factors are f limiting factors that, are, that depend on the population size. So this includes competition, predation, parasitism, and disease. So for competition, organisms compete for resources. This is, and this can occur between members of a same species or in between species, because we know that two species cannot occupy the same niche at the same time. So there's always competition. Then there's predation. So this is the predator-prey relationship. As we can see from the graph, when the prey's population density increases, we see a short time later the predator's population increases. And then this means that there's more f food for the more predators. So the pre or more predators to eat the prey, so then we see a decrease in the prey. And this also results in less food for the predators, so then there's a decrease in their population. However, when there's a decrease in the population of predators, the prey uh, have the opportunity to uh, increase their population. And this is just a cycle that is constantly happening. Next we have parasitism and disease. So parasites are a lot like predators, except they take the nourishment from their host animal, usually without killing the animal. And then diseases uh, can uh, sufficiently wipe out populations and leave room for others to grow. Next we have the density independent factors. So these affect all populations in similar ways regardless of size. So this includes uh, unusual weather such as um, tornadoes, heavy rainfall, droughts, natural disasters, forest fires, earthquakes, uh, volcanoes, um, seasonal cycles, 
just the going through from spring we see a l increase in the populations with all the new baby uh, individuals and then certain human activities such as logging and damming which uh, usually result in the decrease of uh, individuals populations all right uh, section 5-3 human population growth so historically uh, humans population has not increased till about 500 years ago when it started to exponentially increase now this is because we saw a a the advancement of nutrition sanitation and many other things and this led to the birth rates which had once been equal to the death rates to start to increase rapidly so the uh, uh, this then the pattern of this is uh, the study of the pattern is called uh, demography the study of human populations so uh, the main studies are the birth rates death rates and age structure of a population and these help to predict uh, growth rates so at a um, the demographic transition is what I was just talking about the increase from the birth and death rates being equal to the birth rates uh, surpassing the death rates so this started for the United States in uh, 1790 and it went all the way to 1910 uh, so this transition is um, it is the reason that the United States now has a very slow growth rate. We went through our dramatic, our demographic transition early, so now we can see the slow growth rate in the graph over here. We have close to equal amounts of of people in each age group. Now, when we see countries with rapid growth, such as Guatemala, Nigeria, and Saudi Arabia, we see a greater number of uh, people in the lower age groups. So when these people get older, we will see that um, there will be mo even more children. So for the United States, the growth rate's much slower. But for countries, uh, underdeveloped countries that are going through the demographic transition, we expect them to almost double in population size, which in the next 30 years. So the future population growth. So dem dem demographers have to consider many factors, including disease, ease, and other such things. We know about the bubonic plague, which uh, decimated almost 30% of the human population on Earth at the time. And we also know that Earth's population will continue to grow. There's nothing we can do to stop it. Many countries right now are going through exponential growth, such as the underdeveloped countries going through the dem demographic transition, while others, even like the U.S., it's still growing uh, just slower than most. And so we know Earth's carrying capacity to be between 2 to four, 40 billion people. So we're hopefully that we won't reach the carrying capacity for some uh, amount of years and then at which point the humans will have to make a change in the population growth rates. Okay, now on to the key concepts. So chapter 5 key concepts. Be able to list the three characteristics of a population, the factors that can change a population size, know the difference between exponential and logistic growth, and list three density-dependent factors and three density-independent factors. Uh, make sure you can describe the general trend of human population growth, and then what factors determine different growth rates in different countries. All right, that's it for Chapter 5. See you at Chapter 6.